window this year. Um, good. So I'm ready to start uh, my lecture. This is lecture number seven. And uh, as you see already from the title, it combines two topics we had already. Josephson effect in superconducting junctions. That we had a lecture before. We talk extensively about superconductivity and what happens uh, at the junctions. Uh, next is uh, Coulomb blockade that we have to hit. Two lectures ago, it's about possibility to have discrete charges, transport of discrete charges, and um, energy associated with, um, with charging was Coulomb blockade. Uh, right, and uh, when we combine these two things, uh, then a new world is opening eventually. This is a world of homemade quantum mechanics. Why would I prefer to call it homemade? Uh, because uh, usually, and uh, such years ago, almost everybody took it for granted. Uh, usual uh, way of thinking that you cannot can have multiple effects only at atomic level, uh, right? Atoms you cannot make at home. You cannot cannot have that terms, which are made before that, but you cannot make it. Uh, but uh, eventually, with some simple tools, you can work at home at sub-micrometer scale. Uh, that uh, perhaps does not sound um, uh, apparent. But believe me, um, uh, people can do it harm touch things. Uh, for instance, uh, well, uh, departing from the topic of quantum transfer, uh, there are people, for instance, who would write uh, long novels on rice grain, you know, just for fun. Uh, they really do it at um, um, sub micron scale, uh, the size of the letter could be micron, even less. And uh, they do at home, so whatever, they just use um, uh, grains of sand as uh, writing tools, uh, and they use microscope, and they use their own hand grips. So there's a possibility to work at home at some micrometer scale. Well, you need some low temperature installations, of course, in order to put in practice. But, uh, well, you can make uh, artificial atoms, artificial quantum systems, uh, combining Josephson effect and Coulomb blockade, right? Uh, what we see now in QTech, um, in QTech is a, um, achieve quantum computations, uh, or at least go uh, to quantum computations in many roads, but most uh, kind of well-paved uh, road is to use superconducting devices. So eventually to exploit the principle of combination of superconductivity and Coulomb blockade. Good. So that's a very interesting, I would say, practical topic, some uh, technology. And uh, let us see, uh, let me go through outline. We will look at uh, Coulomb Island under superconducting um, 
conditions that will be basic systems uh, to treat. And we will figure out, we will show with a simple calculation that phase and charge, superconducting phase and charge in the island are conjugated variables, very much like a momentum and coordinate are conjugated variables in quantum mechanics. And uh, we will be able to write quantum mechanical description, Schrodinger equation for the system. We will look at two limits of our artificial atom. A limit where charge is well defined and phase is well defined. Uh, we will look at uh, macroscopic uh, quantum tunneling, which was the first manifestation of uh, homemade quantum mechanics. First um, observation of quantum effects in um, this setup uh, from Josephson Junction, Plomb Lacate, uh, macroscopic quantum tunnel. Um, a topic which I uh, like very much, uh, but I have uh, very little uh, uh, time to talk about this. It's about making uh, many junctions, placing it uh, together, let them interact. Uh, if you just have an atom, well, you can enjoy with this. You can also place atoms next to each other, making a material, making a solid. Uh, the same you can do with artificial atoms made from Jefferson junctions. Uh, you can make large arrays out of that, simulating solids. Uh, and I will try to talk about this uh, shortly. In this arrays, you can have uh, very strange particles, very strange uh, quantum objects, which are called vortices. So this is the plan for today. Uh, right, sir, I don't see anything uh, in the chat. Is it my fault or? Um, so I'm, uh, I keep losing chat window. Let's see, control, oops. Okay, now I see that. But my sharing is, uh, how is it? Uh, fine. So uh, there's nothing in the chart, or just in the chat. Right, so uh, how to give a kind of general concept why it works for this particular combination. In principle, all um, uh, classical systems uh, are not entirely classical. Each classical system has uh, some quantum mechanical features. Uh, why this particular combination of Coulomb Lacate and uh, uh, Josephson Junction? Uh, works. Let me explain this. We've been talking about Coulomb blockade in normal metal. And there it became clear that uh, for an isolated island, we have different states corresponding to different charges quantization, but it wasn't uh, quantization uh, of quantum mechanical objects. We've been talking about classical charge states and uh, we've been operating with these um, states um, 
using probabilities rather than weight functions. The reason for that, that for uh, normal metrons, there are very many states of low energy representing the same charge in the islands. One can, for instance, create uh, electron hole pair in the island and that costs very little energy. And um, uh, it will be the same state. So in fact, this charge state not, uh, doesn't seem to be unique. Superconductivity uh, does two things. First, superconductors have a gap with respect to charge excitations. It means um, uh, there will be no possibility to create electron hole pair at very low energy. So each charge state becomes unique. Second, these states have a chance to be coherent. Superconductivity also brings coherence, quantum coherence. So one can arrange quantum superpositions of these states. How coherence is brought, you will see it in more mathematical details uh, very soon. Uh, right, it's just a property of the junction to have current at constant phase. So that uh, these two uh, peculiarities of these effects, if combined, can uh, provide us possibilities to build individual quantum states at micrometer uh, scale. Right, it is just a state like an atom, but in an atom, it's basically made from one or two particles of electrons uh, rotating around the, the uh, protons. But uh, in um, in uh, our system, this state eventually involves billions and billions of individual particles at micrometer uh, scale. Still, uh, it works like a single state uh, made from a single. Uh, laws of quantum mechanics are quite general. Good. It was more or less philosophy. Any questions about this? French that I, I'm losing chat window. It's uh, somehow interference of two programs which I use. But I don't see uh, anything in the chat if you still put a question to the chat and I don't see it, please uh, unmute yourself, speak up. Um, uh, make me aware of this fact. Good. If there are no questions, uh, let me go uh, uh, forward and let me describe a simple system with which we can um, illustrate all this quantum mechanical stuff. Uh, we will be talking about uh, superconducting islands. Islands, because we want to have a place to store charge. Superconducting, because we want to use uh, superconductivity. 
it will be the same system we have studied in Coulomb blockade like success. So first, the island is here, all right? Uh, if it's not connected to anything, it would be very boring because uh, the charge of this island would stay unchanged forever. We need to provide something which we can um, change charge with. So we place a metallic electrode and other superconductor nearby and connect the island and superconductor with Josephson link with Josephson junction. Uh, next to it, it is convenient to shift or try to shift the potential of the island with respect to this uh, superconductor with a gate. So there is no electric contact, but uh, well, there is, a, uh, there is a capacitive connection between island and the gate. Uh, right, uh, let us see what we have in our system and in a bit uh, more detail. Let us write the energy which is uh, associated with the system. Uh, first of all, we have Josephson energy. We've been talking about this. It is uh, energy which is paid for phase difference between the two superconductors. Our two superconductors is the islands and uh, the um, uh, bulk. And this involves uh, phi, superconducting phase. If I plot it versus phi, uh, okay, it's inverse cosine. So it has a minimum at zero. And uh, let's see, maximum at uh, what, I would two. <coughs> um, uh, right, uh, besides, we have energy which is uh, inherited from Coulomb blockade setup. Uh, right, this is Coulomb energy. Uh, we remember how does it look like. It's uh, the energy of a capacitor uh, associated uh, with the islands. So it is number of charges. And um, uh, this number is shifted with a gate uh, voltage. As you remember, uh, if on the charge energy, charging energy is present, we can tune the number of charges by tuning gate voltage and we we'll change it in steps. Uh, it's a bit more complex, we will look at it. Uh, let me stress that we don't know yet at this stage the relation between these two variables and number of charges and phi superconducting phase um, and uh, okay let's just try to establish it to figure that out which amounts to quantization of the system right um, Quantization, quantization of uh, any classical system, uh, which is quantization basically to figure it out how quantum rules, quantum mechanics applies to given classical system. Uh, general scheme of this quantization is to first replace 
classical variables which we have in the system by quantum operators. Uh, next step, one could say it's a bit the guesswork. One uh, acts with, um, one deals with operators and in order to deal with them successfully, one needs to postulate commutation relations between the operators. Good, so we postulate something, we put some hypothesis. How to check this hypothesis? The um, criterion is that the resulting quantum equations of motion, which we can derive from commutation relations, should correspond to classical equations of motion, at least in certain meaning. This is guideline. Let us see how we can deal with quantization of the system in hand. Uh, to make it simpler, uh, let me make uh, some assumptions. Let me uh, assume that phases involved are somehow small. So I could approximate cosine with its Taylor expansion at small phases. Well, that will uh, give me a rather convenient Hamiltonian, which is quadratic in both um, charge and phase. All right. Uh, then we need to compare two sets of equations, classical and quantum. Let me establish uh, quantum equations, uh, classical equations first. Uh, so at, we need to combine some simple uh, pieces of information about, about the uh, system at hand. Uh, for instance, uh, what would be time derivative of charge in the island? That will be current run into the island. But the island, but the current is a function of phase, which is conformed to this assumption, is just proportional to phase. All right, this is current consideration. We need to know how phase evolves. This is given by Josephson relation which uh, relates time derivative uh, of the phase to a voltage. Which voltage? In our case, it is a voltage drop at the capacitor. So it is uh, related to the charge and coefficient is capacitance. All right, so in that case, we can, uh, we can, um, uh, yeah, for instance, we can substitute voltage by charge in this equation. And let me rewrite uh, these equations, uh, keep the same equations, but rewrite it in more convenient uh, variables. Instead of charge, sort of quantum variables, instead of charge, I would use N. Uh, number particles uh, in current, critical current, I will express in terms of Josephson energy, and uh, capacitance in terms of charging energy. Just writing and good. These equations are, rewrite, are written in a rather compact form like this. Linear questions. Good, it was all classical. Now let us do quantization. 
postulate. Let us postulate. I still uh, had a question about the previous slide. Uh, somebody stuck in, let us see. Uh, what is that with the chat? Uh, I need to stop here, it seems. And uh, yes, uh, now the question. Why does the charge disappear as well at the simplified energy? The charge does not disappear. We still have n squared, right? Uh, what I did, I uh, skip uh, gate voltage again uh, for simplicity. Um, another assumption to make uh, our life easier. All right, so let us, let me get back to here. Yeah, here we are. Computational relations. Uh, so we postulate that uh, uh, commutator of uh, n and phi is just a constant, no operator. Uh, the constant e is still to be to be tuned. It is a parameter. We will choose this constant in such a way that it corresponds to um, that quantum equations will correspond to classical equations. Okay, so how to derive quantum equations of motions? Uh, fortunately, there is a very simple and general method how to do this. It's called Heisenberg equation. So time derivative of any operator is given by I divided by H bar commutator of this particular operator with a Hamiltonian. Okay, Hamiltonian is uh, known. It uh, is, uh, let me perhaps uh, flash it. Uh, yeah, here, energy, which is promoted to Hamiltonian, if one replaces n and phi with operators. Uh, right, so we do this commutations, and this is what we have. Here and here. Now, we need to compare it with classical dynamics the equations which we have seen on the previous slide. Good. So this is what we derive. Fine. And it looks like, uh, it, it, it looks very similar to the relation which we um, uh, use for uh, in quantum mechanics of a single particle. This is like relation between uh, momentum and coordinate, which is indeed constant operator. Let's see it's, uh, if I remember correctly, could, could have a uh, sign instead here. Right. Then we can use this result and basically uh, map the situation in hand into um, into quantum mechanics of a single particle. Uh, let us see. Let us consider uh, phase representation. So we will treat phase like a coordinate. Then um, n would become a momentum. Good. So let us see, let us recall what do we have for operator of momentum in representation of coordinate. Yeah, you know that the momentum will become a derivative. 
let us now go to opposite representation. Let us go to charge representation. So in this representation, a uh, face would be derivative of N. That's nice to know, but this is not what we have in our equation. In fact, let me come back to the full Hamiltonian. We have a cosine phi in our equation. So we need to understand what this cosine or imaginary exponent means in this representation. And I don't know whether you get it in um, uh, your quantum mechanical course. Uh, the exponent of uh, gradient operator is a shift. Who has heard about this? Who recalls this? Does it ring uh, a, a bell for anybody? I have to stop share to make sure I see the chat window. Uh, yeah, doesn't ring the bell. Uh, let us see. Let me perhaps do it at support transparency. It is a zoom whiteboard, not very convenient. Uh, let me start with a uh, white uh, screen. Good. So, usual quantum mechanics. Momentum operator is like this, derivative res respect to x. And the question is, what is uh, the operator of this kind? Um, right. To understand uh, what is an operator, one should uh, um, act with this operator on a, on a function. What is an operator? It uh, acts on a function, it gives uh, another function. Right? So let us uh, try to act with this operator. on a function of x. What is this? Uh, there are many ways to uh, compute this. Uh, perhaps fastest uh, way is to use Taylor expansion of the exponent. Uh, let's see, how do I write it? Uh, some ren a to the power ren. And uh, a to the power ren divided by n factorial. So if I substitute this um, uh, 
uh, functions that will uh, oh, that has to act on this function. If I substitute uh, p in 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 terms of derivatives, this will give me all possible derivatives derivative to the power n of this function times a to the power n divided by n factorial and uh, now the bell must be ringing because what you have here is a Taylor expansion of this function. So summing up Taylor expansion, we eventually come to this. So upon the action of the separator, a function has been shifted by value of a. Fine. Please, your reaction. You will get this. Fine rule understand this. Yes. Okay. Good, good, good. So our exponent of the gradient operator amounts to a shift. Very convenient. Then I can um, get back to my uh, transparency. Oh, are we talking already about an hour? Time goes. Oh, not yet. Um, a time goes fast. Commutation relation. And uh, that uh, is what I want to say, which is important for us. Uh, exponent of i phi operator corresponds to a shift in n space, which is very physical, which means that the uh, charge has been changed by two. Why two? Uh, well, because we are dealing with Cooper pairs, so there are two electrons which have been transferred. So eventually, exponent of I phi is a transfer operator. It changes the number of particles in the ion by two. Fine. Uh, we establish quantization and we have good hints how to write Schrodinger equation. We could just copy the equation from our experience uh, with a single particle using this correspondence. Fine, Schrodinger equation. Uh, what is this in phase representation? In this case, Josephson energy is a potential energy. And charging energy, remember N is uh, like momentum. So we have momentum square. Uh, the gate uh, comes uh, like a term here. Uh, eventually it comes as a magnetic flux. Similar equations we have a, for a um, particle which interacts with magnetic uh, field. Good, that's phase representation. We can also rewrite the same equation in charge representation. And in this case, a charge and energy 
is diagonal. <coughs> that what one expects. Uh, yeah, it's uh, just representation where charge is uh, is diagonal at the rate. So it looks like um, potential energy. This is diagonal in phase representation. This is diagonal in charge representation. Uh, however, Josephson energy is somewhat more complex than uh, this and um, the kinetic energy uh, for a particle. It involves two shift operators as we have already considered. Uh, cosine is made of two exponents with opposite signs, so it's a shift in both directions. Fine, so we have uh, um, an equation. Is it enough to solve the problem? Uh, eventually not. Uh, mathematically, one has to figure out what are boundary conditions for this equation. And just looking at the ceiling, uh, taking the problem mathematically, I can think of two kinds of boundary conditions for this equation. Uh, well, first of all, uh, this potential is periodic. So, uh, yeah, that's what I, I sketched it, right? So it is natural to assume that the wave function is also periodic and wave function here is the same as the wave function here. Periodic boundary conditions. Uh, alternative is not to assume this. An alternative is to say, well, phase can take any values from minus infinity to plus infinity. Uh, it is unrestricted and there is no correspondence between phase here and phase here. Similar wave functions, uh, you would encounter similar boundary conditions, so to say, you would encounter in uh, solid state physics. Eh? Uh, when we also talk about the uh, motion of a particle in a periodic potential, and there are so called block states. I will shortly mention that. Good, so uh, just looking at the ceiling, treating the problem mathematically, we have two choices of boundary conditions. Surprisingly enough, both choices are realized. They just correspond to slightly different systems. Uh, all right. Let me uh, first understand that periodicity in phase eventually Im implies charge quantization. Uh, to do so, let me try, let me impose such a condition on the wave function. And let me skip Josephson energy for simplicity. Um, then there's only a kinetic energy left, charging energy left, and the wave functions become exponents of phi. It could be an exponent of this kind. But I must satisfy boundary conditions, and that quantizes k vector in this exponent. So it becomes uh, an integer like I put it here. Good, so if I have an island, I have quantization, charge quantization. So for an island, I can have 
I, so I, I should impose periodic boundary conditions. Let's have this, such a system. Metal, uh, junction, and island. But I don't have to have an island. I could just think of a single junction between two bulk metals. And in this case, there's no charge quantization in either like charge. The charge is continuous. And that uh, corresponds to the second choice of uh, boundary conditions. Uh, pi can be anything. Uh, there are block states. There are block states. And if you recall the properties of block states, uh, in solid state, it's called quasi-momentum. I would call it quasi-charge. The property is that if uh, one shifts a block state, the period, it acquires a phase factor, which doesn't have to be um, uh, integral. It just uh, just continuous. Continuous charge can be present in the absence of uh, island, in the absence of charge quantization. Fine, sir, so is a single question like this. We can describe both systems imposing a uh, proper. Um, fine, so let's go on. Two boundary conditions, uh, two physical systems uh, under consideration, and I will mostly concentrate on uh, super islands because yeah, it's just a model for at times. Uh, let me consider two limits, two simple limits. Uh, they differ by two, by the ratio between two parameters in the Hamiltonian. There was charging energy and Josephson energy. And at the moment, we assume that charging energy dominates. So how to understand what happens in the system? Uh, well, to this end, we just disregard Josephson energy. We put it to zero. Uh, and then we have um, energy which we know already. It's just Coulomb Island. And we remember this picture of parabolas. So what I did in this picture, let me remind you. There is a parabola corresponding to each value of discrete charge. And uh, um, I plot these parabolas as a function of um, gate voltage um, for different charges. And then uh, 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 to sort the states, I just uh, connect lower most pieces of parabolas, red color, that gives me ground state. Blue color gives me first excited state. Green color is second excited state, so on. Crossing parabolas. Good, this is a very clear picture. Charge states, states of fixed charge. Um, but it's a bit boring, okay? Uh, there is very interesting uh, place parameter choice in this model. When we have, we, we can have a clear example of uh, quantum mechanical behavior of the system. Uh, namely, let me concentrate on the crossing between two parabolas. 
In this case, two charged states have uh, the same energy, charge state zero and charge state two. And uh, the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian, in this case, uh, sorry, the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian, in this case, uh, uh, are uh, superpositions of this charging states. Perhaps I can sketch a Hamiltonian. I don't want to spend much time on this. Uh, let us see what can I do. Uh, right. So here in this region, we uh, have only two states. What does it mean? It means that any Hamiltonian is a two by two matrix. So let me have a place for two by two matrix. Uh, first, uh, let uh, me take into account the effect of uh, uh, charging energy. So let me introduce a variable which shows how, um, sing, uh, how single ch charge states are separated if we go away from the crossing point. And let me just call this energy epsilon. And what I want to write is like this. So epsilon is a parameter, say gate voltage, which is zero in the crossing point. And if it's not zero, then one of the states um, becomes high in energy, another state becomes lower in energy. Is it clear what I mean? So this, uh, I, I just, uh, just uh, this is a state zero. This is a state uh, two. Ooh. I think I um, lost all my windows. Uh, okay, um, right. So uh, these states, zero and two, they have different energies. So that's, what, that's how I put it into Hamiltonian. Besides, there is a Josephson energy, and we know what Josephson energy does. It uh, adds or extracts a Cooper pair. But this particular Hamiltonian, it means that there is a non-diagonal matrix element. Well, and I write it here. Then I have two by two matrix. I must find eigenvalues and eigenstates. And uh, well, eigenvalues are easy to find will be plus minus um, so if I plot this eigenvalues I will have a hyperplus uh, right the question was shouldn't the zero state have the lower energy uh, I guess there's some um, misunderstanding uh, between uh, numbers and colors in this figure. Uh, zero, I will sketch what zero means. 
zero means a whole parable like this. Two means the whole parable like this. Minus two means the whole parable like this. Okay? So when we concentrate on the crossing, let me write it here. This is how zero state goes. And um, this is how state two goes. Right, just near the crossing. Is it clear to everybody now? Yeah, fine. Right, so let me continue with this figure. If we plot this uh, eigenvalues, now we have uh, hybridization of this level, so just like this. And uh, right in the middle, if epsilon equals to zero, uh, the eigenfunctions are equal weight superpositions as I put it here. So there was a simple way to make a superposition. You cannot make it everywhere, but only near the, the uh, crossing. But, but that, that's, that's enough. So uh, when we will talk about qubits, uh, historically first uh, qubit in the situation has been realized in this way. Uh, fine, so let us see, that was the limit of uh, dominating charging energy, mostly boring, but he, at the crossings of the parables, at certain settings of gate voltage, we can realize uh, quantum superpositions of two states. It's also handy because all other states kind of not relevant in this point. One can concentrate on two states on it. Uh, fine, so let us go to opposite limit. Uh, let us go to the case where Josephson junction is, um, uh, Josephson energy is big. Uh, this is a little bit more complex uh, limit. Also, the dominance cannot be set at all energies, at sufficiently big energies sufficiently big energy states of this island, uh, the charging energy is uh, significant. Well, one can see it immediately in this plot. So here I plot uh, all energy levels in this system. And uh, uh, I look at this uh, dependence on the gate voltage. And for charge, the states which are mostly charges, the dependence is uh, quite significant. And okay, I can see it at uh, high energy, but for lower energies, well, at least for energies smaller than uh, Josephson energy, the states do not depend on charge. Let us understand why is it so. Uh, in order to do this, let me sketch this uh, potential again. And uh, the states of lower energy, if I sketch them, are somewhere near the bottom of the potential. Good. 
what does it mean that uh, a good idea is to approximate this potential with a parabolic potential that should work very fine at least at the bottom uh, right and that's what i see in the spectrum so with parabolic potential, it becomes an oscillator, uh, equidistant levels, almost equidistant levels. So that's what I get. Uh, dependence uh, on Q is associated with an ability for kind of a particle here to go through this barrier. And if the, if, if the energies are lower, wave functions somehow concentrated here, they don't feel the barrier at all. But at high energies, wave functions are more like this. They can uh, go over the barrier. They acquire dependence on uh, the gate. That's what you see. Ultimately, the states with very high energy uh, just have too much of kinetic energy, charging energy. And they don't feel this potential, so they're just uh, plane waves. Good, so we understood this limit. Um, there are two regimes, and in one regime, we just uh, deal with the uh, states of an oscillator. At high levels, we are back to the picture of uh, charging states. Right? Uh, here's a possibility to talk about uh, localization in charge, uh, phase space. If the state, if a state is localized in charge, then it is delocalized in phase, and vice versa. For instance, this state near the bottom, it is uh, delocal, it is localized in phase. So corresponding to this level, for instance, it's it, 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 it is very tight uh, near the bottom of the potential. It means that it is delocalized in charge space. These states are completely delocalized in phase. They're more like plane waves. Uh, right, it means that they are localized in charge. Fine. At this level, we understood uh, very much uh, uh, almost everything about a single junction. And uh, it is like a hydrogen atom. Quantum mechanics, uh, understanding hydrogen atom is uh, important for other steps. Uh, for us, uh, it was um, an example of a single atom made from Joseon junction, we can already see there's a degree of flexibility one can change different uh, scales of uh, EG and EC and get very different level systems. Uh, let me now turn to say a little bit about single junction. Uh, mostly for historical reasons, uh, but it, it's also a nice, uh, cute uh, piece of um, physics. Okay, as um, we already discussed, for a single function, for a single junction, there is no periodicity in phase space. 
And uh, formally, it means that there are no discrete states, uh, there are also only block states present. Uh, but let us uh, consider some uh, specific uh, situation. Let us understand this situation a certain limit. Sure, Josephson energy will dominate, uh, which means that I have this periodic potential rather high. Good. And uh, let me understand um, what will happen for uh, state uh, of the junction corresponding to uh, energy minimum. Well, apparently it will uh, stay somewhere near the bottom of this potential. As we see the potential is still dead. because we apply some current bias. We have discussed this washboard potential when we talk about single junction. So in this case, there's a multitude of possibilities for particle which pictures Johnson junction. It can be in this well, under this well, or in this well. Good, if its behavior is completely classical, uh, then it would be like a memory cell. It would uh, remain forever in one of the uh, wells. Quantum particle can jump through the barrier. Quantum particle can go from one well to another well. Good, and uh, the observation of this microscopic tunneling is uh, very clear in this situation. Again, let me recall what we know about dynamics of uh, the phase about Josephson junction. Um, if uh, it jumps from here to here, it gives a pulse of voltage. And it would not stop here. It would uh, go here and here and here. So, in order to see this microscopic quantum tunneling, one just needs to detect voltage pulses coming from the junction. Okay, then one has to make sure that these fluctuations doesn't come uh, or because of high temperature, doesn't come because this uh, kind of temperature is um, uh, big and these high levels are populated. One has to make it at sufficient low temperatures. See this voltage pulse is so average voltage and that's it. There is a pioneering experiment of uh, microscopic quantum tunneling. Uh, let me try, let me train uh, multiple choice questions. Uh, we'll have it during examination almost for sure. Um, let me formulate one. So when this experiment has been done, I gave two possibilities. No, three. Otherwise, it won't be uh, okay. That's a uh, thousand. So, please uh, type your answer in chat window. So that has been an experiment 
um, people uh, have boosted DIFT, uh, quantum effect in Johnson junctions, macroscopic quantum tunneling in the setup I described. A, A. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, good. Not everybody has answered, uh, but oh, B. Uh, but let me give you correct answer and explain why. Um, correct answer is uh, A. And the first answers were uh, correct. So, well, it, not that history is terribly important, but one has to kind of um, keep it in mind uh, in order to, uh, basically, as I say, in this case, you understand the future better if you um, um, remember how it, that it evolved you can make analytical continuation in the future. Uh, 1962 could have been the case, but that time uh, Josephson effect was just discovered. So people were not that much experienced with Josephson junctions. Uh, they could not do fancy things like um, integrating these with measuring aperture, with um, uh, making such a rather complex measurement. Uh, 2005, uh, yeah, in that year, quantum technology was already pretty much developed. Uh, people could do much more complex uh, things with just junctions. And uh, that kind of brings us to, to uh, option A. It was 1985, somewhere in between these dates. By 2005, they have already full operation qubits, uh, stuff like this. OK, we will talk about history of qubits as well. Uh, uh, good, then let us uh, go on. Let me um, mention a, a thing which I um, would have to mention, but did not do this in order not, not to confuse it. We, uh, so far, we have assumed that number of charges in the island was even. Uh, that was justified that, uh, by the fact that um, the charge could be changed only by two. But there's a logic jump. Eh? It can initially be in a odd state, then it will remain odd um, uh, if you change it by two. So there are two possibilities for a superconductor, superconducting island, to be in either in the state is odd or even number of charges. Fortunately, these possibilities are different and they differ in energy. Why is it, sir? 
it is called parity effect, uh, which is uh, rather of the thing. Let me consider superconducting island. And let me sketch uh, the spectrum. Ah, I wouldn't even sketch the spectrum. Let me just say that it uh, costs energy to put a quasi particle to the uh, to the island. So, if the number of charges in uh, the island is even. It's a uh, perfectly fine. We can achieve uh, ground state energy. But if I wish to add another electron, it has to go here to the states. There's no place for it in superconducting condensate. So there's an energy to pay, and this is at least superconducting energy gap. Uh, right. With this, let me get back to the picture of the parabolas. And I plot the energy associated with this parabolas. Uh, taking this effect into account. What does it mean? It means that I have to plot a parabolas with odd number of charges a little bit higher level. I have to shift it by delta. Um, then everything is determined if this energy delta uh, is um, bigger or smaller than uh, the charging energy, which determines the position of crossings of this parabolas. There is a pedagogical type in this slide. Uh, please localize it. Please find this type before I correct this. You have found this. Uh, basically, we consider two situations. Yeah, Jerry got it. Uh, we consider two situations uh, of delta, which is smaller than charging energy and larger than charging energy. If, and if delta is uh, smaller, so I'm correcting the taper. The situation is like this, and both states of uh, odd and even parity have uh, the same energy, so they have roughly uh, the same probability to be realized. Which is not good. What is good if uh, delta is bigger than charging energy? Well, in this case, uh, this. Uh, Odd parabolas are much higher than, um, than uh, even parabolas, and we can forget about the odd states. Good, parity effect, very simple effect, which uh, gives us a preference for odd number of particles in superconductors. Uh, very good. So, in remaining uh, minutes, uh, let me talk about uh, uh, Josephson uh, race. Let me look at it um, first operationally, understand that one can make it. Uh, second uh, level of operation is to recognize that I can make a, a Metronian. I can theoretically describe what's going on, or at least to pretend to. Right, so let me imagine that I have a kind of uh, working plane, like 
have a surface. And I, I just put superconducting islands onto the surface. Yeah, I can plot, uh, put them close to each other, making uh, overlap between them, making Johnson junctions. Can make systems like this. It can be a regular system containing many, many atoms like this. It can be also a chain of Johnson junctions. Over two chains. Uh, right, that's what I, I, I can do. Uh, again, to, to perhaps I was too fast to make it clear. It is more like uh, you have an isolated plate, isolated surface, substrate, and you, for instance, uh, evaporate metal into these given areas, uh, allowing for some overlap. Good. So it looks like we, uh, we we can associate each island with an atom, and it looks like we can collect a solid by by connecting atoms to each other. Uh, let's see if I can make a Hamiltonian of that. Here I can. So for each junction, I have phases of two adjacent islands, so K numbers junctions, and one, two, uh, 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 this is a junction, and one, two are uh, islands adjacent to this junction. Good, that uh, will be Josephson energy as to capacitive energy. Okay, here it is. So there are some charges, for instance, here and here. And there's a capacitive network between the islands here, here, and here. So um, that gives us charging energy between the islands. Right. So if you think of a charge, which is uh, localized in these islands, then, right, it's like a particle which can be here, here, and here. And Josephson energy enables jumps from one island to another island. It works like kinetic energy. While uh, this energy is more like interaction energy of two particles. With this in, with this, uh, in mind, we can kind of uh, make very simple conjectures uh, about the physics which one can encounter in such arrays. Okay, so it is the same picture. I just make it a little bit uh, regular. So where is the island? Uh, uh, island is eventually here. Each crossing of the lines is an island. And the Johnson junctions are such crosses. Right, so what the physics how to comprehend possible uh, physical scenarios in this system. Uh, again, it's about competition between charging energy and uh, Josephson energy. Uh, let me consider first the limit them uh, charges dominate. In this case, a chance to jump from um, 
junction to uh, so the junctions will be very small right josephson energy small so i would have some arrangement of uh, charges in the way and these changes won't jump no charge jump no conductivity and eventually i expect in this limit uh, the array to be in in insulating state is it kind of is this analogy clear in order to move charge i would have to put it here just an energy is too small in order to do this and i have to work against uh, repulsion because i get it closer to another charge so it's an insulator. If I measure the resistance of this, uh, it will be Coulomb blockade. No resist, uh, no, no conductance whatsoever. Opposite limit. Opposite limit is simple. It just all becomes superconducting. So there are superconducting connections here, there, everywhere. So if Josephson energy dominates, we should have a piece of superconductor. They are, these behaviors are very distinct. There can be no continuous transition between them. And this implies that there must be a true phase transition in the system. Situated somewhere, or oh quantum phase transition situated somewhere at the point where charging energy equals Josephson energy. So that's a, that's a kind of short uh, introduction to uh, physics of Josephson junctions, junction arrays. And uh, what I want to say, it's a bit practical, pessimistic uh, note. Uh, in um, 90s series, there were many attempts to uh, deal with just uh, arrays, build systems uh, which are based on just some uh, junction arrays. Uh, despite uh, big research effort, the kind of um, the um, uh, results uh, kind of are limited. And what spoils uh, everything is a uh, disorder. Uh, at the foreign, uh, current fabrication uh, schemes do not allow to make all the junctions precisely the same. And besides our charges, so there are also induced charges in each island, which are random. So with all that, you don't have only a solid. You have very disordered solid. And to comprehend the details of physics, till now on appears to be too complex. Technology is there, technology is uh, sophisticated, perhaps uh, when you are in working age, uh, the, um, um, there will be a new attempt to assess the physics of uh, Josephson Junction Arrays with a new level of technology. Uh, but that is uh, some work for you to do. Uh, good. So I promised to say something about the vertices. I have a couple of minutes. So it is clear how charges can occur in the islands. It just comes from charge quantization. And there is another uh, 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 quantization which can occur uh, here. And uh, let me present it in this way. 
what is there? Now I consider the array in the state when Joseph's uh, energy dominates, which means that each island has a phase. So this picture is eventually the same picture as here. I just don't uh, want to uh, write all these junctions. In each island, I have an error, and I have this uh, blue, blue um, bracket in the uh, in the cell. A loop of four Josephson junctions. Let me look at this picture and let us understand the quantization. Uh, which uh, is um, now uh, rather in fashion. It's an example of topological quantization. If we uh, look at any bracket which is not such, for instance, in this one, and if we count the phase changes from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, and back to here. If you just add up all phase changes, it comes to zero. By change, one looks at these uh, vectors and takes a minimal angle between these vectors. But look, for this particular bracket, the sum of phase changes is to pi. I could consider different field configuration. I could consider errors in opposite direction. Sure, it could be minus two pi. What does it mean? It means that our phase configurations where um, uh, we can uh, have uh, discrete objects, quantized objects, in a way uh, it is uh, similar quantization as charge quantization, but for a completely different quantity. All uh, right. There is a handle to, to make such vertices. One just applies magnetic field in this direction. And magnetic field will try to uh, rotate these phases, or we can have, uh, we can induce eventually vertices with this magnetic field. All right. If uh, Johnson energy is very much dominating, these vertices are no quantum particles. They localize, they cannot jump from one side to another side. Finite charge energy allows the quantum motion of these vertices so they can jump from one cell to another cell, interact with each other. Uh, so we, uh, in fact, make some artificial quantum particles in Josephson array. Another exercise in homemade quantum mechanics, which I described in this lecture. So just by combining two effects, I'm coming back to outline, by combining Josephson effect, and Coulomb blockade, one can do wonders. One can uh, develop uh, homemade quantum mechanics, see wonderful at, uh, artificial constructions, uh, artificial atoms, artificial solids, artificial particles. That's what I want to deliver today. Good. Any questions, comments? I'll see to the chart. 
Oh, I missed it. Why do both operators and N operators have the same index i? And why not one with index i and not i? Okay, it was about this uh, operator. No, I, 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 it's, it's, it's simply a type in transparency. I'm sorry about this. It has to be J rule, you're right. So it, in general, it is, it is uh, the charge of uh, another island. This is I, this is J. All right, more questions? Good. Then I uh, will uh, finish this Zoom, Zoom session. I hope the recording was going on and I will uh, put the recording of this uh, lecture to the bright space. So thank you very much for attending. The meeting is over.